Hello pilots, welcome back! Today we'll be taking a look at this beauty. The American T2 XP-55. This is a premium aircraft. Um, as you can see, it gets double the reward and a hefty research point bonus as well. Now, this thing looks weird, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> well, of course it has this awesome camo that is really beautiful and doesn't advertise anything at all. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, this plane looks completely backwards. It has an engine on the rear of the plane, as well as a propeller. Uh, it has this long elongated nose and it has sweat wings, which is unusual. I think this is the only, probably the only aircraft with sweat wings, at least a propeller aircraft. There might be, wait, let me take a look. I think the Japanese one... Yeah. This is probably the close comparison. J the Japanese J7W1. It has a similar configuration. Uh, it's also a pushrod engine. And... Well, not pushrod engine, a pusher engine. And this is a similar configuration, but of course this thing is much better. It has 430mm and... Double the number of propellers or propeller blades. And the wings aren't as swept. But of course, the American one. It's an interesting plane. The first thing you notice when you fly this thing is that it is very fast, but that it doesn't turn at all. This is probably the definition of the American fighter aircraft, especially this tier. You'll have problems even out turning bombers in this thing, seriously. Especially when you go up against IL Force. I have found myself in dogfights against IL Force and I could just couldn't out turn a guy. Of course, it outweighs those problems, which is a pretty good. Um, Armament. It carries two 20mm cannons and two 50 cals. Now, the 50 cals don't carry much ammo, they only have 200 rounds per gun, for a total of 400 rounds. Which, to be honest, is a bit on the low side. Um, you will find yourself to run out of ammo pretty often with this thing. Especially in realistic. Of course, in arcade, you can reload those things pretty fast, but it's a problem. On the other hand, the 20mm cannons get 200 rounds as well. And 400 rounds total for 20mm cannons is a lot. You can shoot down a lot of things with these 20mm cannons. And since the thing is pretty good at... well, it's not the greatest thing at climbing. It climbs pretty well, but there are things that outclimb this thing, definitely. However, it is very, very fast. The... Mm, Sweat wing configuration definitely helps with the speed of this plane. It also dives pretty well. And since all the guns are mounted on the nose, it has a pretty good density of fire as well. Everything you shoot at will hit. You don't even have to set much uh, ammo convergence. Uh, not ammo convergence. Gun convergence. Uh, yeah. Gun convergence on this thing. It just hits. It's awesome. So, especially awesome for uh, hunting bombers. You can really aim for uh, for the weak spots. You can aim for the gunners, you can aim for the engines. Now, I can talk about this thing all day, but... <laughs> the best way to show you guys is to actually fly it out. So let's do that. Ground Strike on Iron Range. This map is interesting. It provides a good uh, amount of cover for a ground attack aircraft. Uh, sadly, this aircraft is not a good ground attacker. This thing is a pure fighter. Since it doesn't carry much ammo for the 50 cals and... You definitely have problems turning at low altitude especially. This thing just gets shot down way too easily. So what I'm doing right here is climbing to a decent altitude. I'm going to try to intercept their bombers. They have a B-25 and SM-79. Cool. 
An IL-4 and a B7A2. Now let's hope they actually go for this uh, for this air base. And as you can see, this ah, this thing just has problems turning. It really does not want to turn. Then again, look at the configuration of this. It just doesn't doesn't have much. Uh, surface area. Which probably explains why it turns so bad. Uh, that in conjunction with the elevators being on the front of the um, of the nose actually. Yeah, those are, those are the elevators. Whee! Ailerons are on the wingtips. I painted them white to for them easy. And then the rudders. The, <laughs> this thing actually has two rudders which is pretty awesome. As you can see it's Respond pretty well to rudder changes. And just like that, we are at almost 5 kilometers altitude. This thing climbs really, really well. Now, there's a bomber over there. There's a big sun over there. Foco of 190. I haven't seen any of the other bombers yet. Which is sad, I want to hunt them. Oh, that guy's fucked. <laughs> Oh, he has three guys on him. Yeah, you got he's unscrewed up. Oh, there's a B-25. Alright. Now. Oh, he's coming for me. Not good, not good, not good. Break. Let's go for the Spitfire first. Hello, Sunshine. Ah. Yeah, I can turn with the Spitfire. What the hell? As you can see, this thing retains speed pretty well. It definitely has problems with turning though. Especially against Spitfires, you can't do anything. Now, let's get this thing into a climb. Into a half split S. And trying to get some energy. The fuck off 190 is climbing up to me. Oh, he's screwed. He's screwed. Comet flaps. I'm rocking stealth ammo with this thing. Oh, he's diving. He's not. Goodbye. <laughs> nice try, bro. <laughs> yeah, this thing... I just love the cannons on this thing. It's awesome. It reminds me a lot of the um, P-38. It is a similar configuration. Um, 20 millimeter cannons on the nose, pretty tight convergence. That could have gone bad. Neck 90 for get away all away from here. Now one thing you have to notice, um, since the engine of this thing is on the back, it actually is not that bad at at head-on passes. That in conjunction with the um, pretty tight ammo conversion. Uh, convergence, please like gun convergence. Means this thing can actually do head on passes pretty well. Now, of course, the cockpit isn't very protected. You get pilot sniped pretty easily, but. I just can't turn with this guy. Look at this. <laughs> I have landing flaps out, I can't turn. Oh, his engine is dead. And we put him out of his misery. Alright, who's next? I haven't reloaded yet. I still have plenty of ammo on this thing. Let's cover the bow fighter. I see he doesn't hope it's... Oh! That's the Ark-90. Evade, evade, evade. Slipping on me? Yes, he is. Now, I can't outturn with this thing, but I can outdive it probably. So let's do that. I hope he doesn't shoot me down immediately. I really don't want to hit, get hit by its 37mm cannon. That would be bad. There we go, another kill. Is he still on me? Yes he is! Come on guys, help me out. Uh, I'm not going to survive this. Leave me alone, dude. I don't like you. No, no, nope. I don't like you, dude. 
Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Guys, come on, help me! This guy's going to eat me. Oh shit. Yes, 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 there we go, there we go. I just can't turn with this guy. Come on. Critical. Ah, there we go. Awesome. Thank you, dude, whoever you are. Who is this guy? You? Oh man, thank you for helping me out. Now, my engine is still doing pretty great, so I didn't take any hits with the engine. I'll just go for a quick reload now. Ah, but I've lost a lot of altitude. Uh, yeah, this is bad. I have to climb again. As you can see, it's really hard to get away once an aircraft is on your tail, especially in arcade mode. If even the Ignite can keep up with you. And since you can't outturn pretty much anything, you're just screwed. I might go for the light pillbox. Uh, now nah, let's hope. Mm. Nah, he's preoccupied. Let's see. Scars are pretty even right now. You have 1600 tickets left, you have 1400. So I think the best thing we can do is go after that A20 and prevent it from doing any damage to our ground targets. I really want to win this thing now. <laughs> This is actually one of my better games. I haven't had that this many ga this many kills in a long time. I just seem to have had some problems with hit detection lately. Then again, 20 millimeters on this can on this thing just rip things apart. Oh, that thing is fast. All right, let's speed up a bit. We can definitely catch him. I may mean, have already critted him, but uh, yeah, he's down. Now this thing does actually tend to overheat a bit. Um, a lot of the American planes have the advantage of just being able to use war emergency power forever. The things just don't overheat at all, especially in realistic mode. This thing, not so much. Uh, it definitely has some cooling problems. Since the engine is at the back, you don't get much air around this thing, so... Cooling is definitely an issue. Alright, let's go for the AAA. And I think I have some AP rounds in the stealth belt. Or at least in the 20mm ones. Oh. See? <laughs> Your biggest threat at low altitude with this aircraft is mountains. You just can't turn this thing. Ah, it's horrible. I'm definitely doing some dangerous flying here. Ah, I can't penetrate this thing from the side. Let's try and get around its back. Do a quick reload. I don't think I have massive cruise on this. Oh, come on, team, we're losing. Get this thing. I definitely have my, my ground targets. What the hell is this guy doing here? HG-51 hydroplane. Come on, dude. I mean, you are excused if that is your only aircraft, but... Really? Oh, come on, don't turn now. Come on! <laughs> All this approach and there's a curve just then. What else can we do? I think it's better to go up the light pillboxes. They at least are stationary and I don't have to worry about turning too much. I'm not really sure if I have AP ammo on these 20mm belts though. I'm pretty sure I don't have them on the 50 cals and since I only have two, it would be a waste to shoot them at the. Uh, at those things. They would just do not any da They just wouldn't do any damage. The 20 mils on the other hand, uh, they might. They might. Now there's a Spitfire closing in on us, so I don't expect us to survive very long. Nope. 
Where is he? Where's that Spitfire was after us? Alright, let's see if, we, see if we can get some artillery. I have to use landing flaps to turn this thing around. You might want to use um, rudder turning with this thing. See, it turns much better with, with the rudder. Still not good. It turns much better with the rudder. Hmm, interesting. It just does not turn off. Oh. These elevators are awful. Come on guys, just hold on. <laughs> Ticket counts is not running down. This isn't doing anything. Uh, when you see that? Oh crap. Well, sadly you didn't get to see that be a 109 kill. I did actually get to kill him, but the recording failed. I'm terribly sorry for that. Sadly we lost. Despite all the efforts and going ground attack with this thing, despite it not being a ground attack aircraft. We're still lost. Oh well, this is War Thunder Arcade for you. But we, overall we did pretty good. We got 28k credits. This without a premium account. So, this is actually pretty, pretty average game. Good gains. Uh, this wasn't the first win of the day. We got a good amount of research point as well. Now, since this thing is a premium aircraft, it comes with everything unlocked. So you don't get much out of the modifications research points. You can get a mar mark of distinction, but... But if you have a premium account, this is pretty much pointless. And despite having double the research point reward as well, um, since I'm researching a tier 4 aircraft, you get a heavy penalty for researching things that are outside of his range. This thing is excellent for researching tier 1 to 3 aircraft, as you can see over there. Anything above that, not so much. So it just becomes a redundant aircraft. Sure, it's fun to play and it's definitely an interesting thing to have. This plane is pretty unique. And it definitely holds its ground. As you can see, we actually finished top of the leaderboards on both teams. Uh, we got 7 air kills and 12 ground kills. Which is bad. <laughs> well, now I understand why our team lost. This thing is not a ground attacker and we got the most uh, ground kills. I see what this guy did. Yeah, this guy just pretty much farmed kills in his Russians. This guy as well. This guy as well. This is probably the only guy that actually went for ground targets. He must be the one who destroyed most of the bases. And not much chatter. You can definitely tell if a team is good or not if they have a good chat history. You have to definitely communicate with your teammates. So, is this thing worth it? I would say yes. This thing is pretty, in, it's pretty fun to fly, and it's definitely a 
well, not unique anymore since the introduction of the J7W1 and the Japanese tech tree. But it's... it's a rare. It's a cool thing to look at. It's like an art piece in a museum. And it's practical as well. Uh, it's definitely a good good thing to research uh, aircraft on the lower tiers, up to tier 3. And... It's just an all-around good plane. Now, of course you have to learn to handle this plane. This is not, this is not a, a newbie's plane. You can't just buy this thing and expect to go into a game in wreck face. No, you have to definitely learn the um, advantages and disadvantages of this aircraft. Know that this thing does not turn. It just doesn't want to turn at all. Stay high. Stay high into the boom and zoom text. Don't do what I did in this video. Or else you get a Yak 9T on your ass, just like I did. Now, you can actually use the rudder, since this thing has two rudders, you can use the rudders pretty effectively to turn, at least horizontally. So remember that. It's actually a cool thing I find out. That's it for this video. My name is Mike Goes Boom. Thank you for watching, and until next time.